Hi, my name is Ruth. I'm with Pehalo Homestead. This is Igor. He's a baby duck that hatched last night. And so uh, he's the only duck that we had hatch. Uh, we only had two eggs. Uh, so it's not like it, it was this dramatic thing or anything. We just had two eggs in there. Um, and so uh, he hatched and he's all by himself. So he needs love and company and, and, and warmth. And apparently he's found it inside my shirt right now. So <laughs> he also has a case of rye neck. So uh, we are feeding him some extra vitamins to help him straighten out his neck because he's got a little bit of a nutrient de um, deficiency. So. He's just asleep. It was super cute. Okay, so I'm gonna keep my hand right here. Uh, hello, so I am doing a three-part series on my favorite books for different um, different parts of my homestead. So I have a herb garden, I have a food forest, and I have a vegetable garden. Uh, I also have animals um, and so I've already talked about uh, the homesteading part with like the animals and stuff like that and then the general homesteading uh, type books that I like to have. I talked about my gardening books that I like to have. And then we also did some uh, foraging and um, wild crafting type uh, books as well. So now we're on to the medicinal herb books. And I have quite a lot of them. I don't think that there's ever too many books that you can have because uh, somebody's going to say something. Maybe it's the same kind of information that you were getting from a different book, but they say it in just a different way that it makes it click for you. And so I think reading, um, even if you feel like you already know about it, uh, is important. Uh, I get books from um, book sales. I get them from um, library sales. I rent them from the library borrow them from the library, borrow them from the library. I uh, get them on, you know, like halfpricebooks.com and garage sales and stuff like that. So um, there are a few books I'm going to show you that I went and I paid full price for, uh, especially ones from Rico Check, who is, um, or Keck, or Ketch. I don't know how to say his last name. All I know is like, he's probably one of the coolest people on the planet and one of the only people that I was ever able to find any information on how to grow certain medicinal plants other than like the basic lavender and things like that. So um, I'm going to go over his books first because uh, they're just they're just incredible and unlike anything I was able to find before. So uh, he he owns the the business uh, Strictly Medicinal Seeds, and you can find that online. Um, but it also used to be known as Horizon Herbs. But this is uh, one of his books. I have three books of his. This is Growing at Risk Medicinal Herbs. So, I mean, how many books have you found out there that teaches you how to grow golden seal or ginseng or unicorn root or, you know, all these these things that are very not abstract, but not something that you'd find in a normal garden, right? Uh, and he goes into depth about this. And I think it's really important too, because not only should we all have medicinal gardens that have things that are in this book, but also a lot of these are um, are getting close to, if not uh, already on the endangered species list. And if we could learn how to cultivate them and grow them ourselves, uh, we might be able to boost those numbers of them again. So he presents knowledge in such a way that it is engaging and fun to read and very inspiring. And so uh, I would highly recommend all of his books. So this is Growing at Risk Medicinal Herbs. And then this is a more generic one on just having a medicinal herb garden. Okay, so this is not just the at risk ones. This is all the herbs, basically. So um, this is an incredible resource. I mean, these two books, I haven't been able to find anything else like them ever. So this is the Medicinal Herb Grower, A Guide for Cultivating Plants That Heal, Volume 1. That makes me so excited because that makes me feel like maybe there's going to be a Volume 2. I'm going to be all over that if he does. Uh, this is also by Rico Keck. Ketch, maybe? Maybe it's Ketch. Uh, and it's illustrated by his daughter. And I just think that's so cool. All his books are illustrated by his daughter. And 
this is his other book, which is Making Plant Medicine. So you've got the herbs. He taught you how to grow them, how to get them from going from seed, where to put them in your garden, where, what type of soil and conditions and how to make it uh, more successful. Now you get to harvest them. What do you do? How do you make those medicines? This is probably my most referenced medicinal making remedy book that I have. It is stained on the pages because I, I keep it open like a recipe book for a lot of my things that I make. But I mean, it's teaching you uh, how to make tinctures and uh, water extracts and succuses. Succuses? I think it's succus, right? I only ever read these things. Uh, salves and creams and food, if you can use it for foods or uh, direct consumption. Uh, things like golden seal and ginseng and goldenrod and elecampane and echinacea and dong quai and dandelion and cactus and calamus and calendula, bloodroot, blue cohosh, I mean bilberry, all the things that you never see talked about a whole lot. They just say, oh, in this herb book, this is what you can use it for. How? <laughs> How do you use that? What are what are the dosages? What are the what are the ratios? How do you do this? It's a low dose medicinal, so how do you how do you make sure you're doing the lowest dose that you should? And like how do you grow them? He has it all in here. So there's gonna be some encyclopedias of herbs in here uh, in this talk that I'm gonna tell you about, and they just say, hey, look, golden seal is good for this. Great, but how? This shows you how. And the other books show you how to grow it. love this deck. <laughs> okay, so uh, if you saw me uh, doing a, a video about why I grow herbs, uh, I talked about my hops in it and that we don't grow beer, or <laughs> that we don't grow beer, that we don't brew beer, but I have intentions of brewing beer because of this book. This is called Sacred and Herbal Healing Beers, uh, The Secrets of Ancient Fermentation. Fermentation is incredible it's probably one of the most healthy things that you could possibly do and this is just a great a great book that teaches you not how to make like miller light or something like that but this is like nutrient dense healing beer i'll let you sit with that for a little bit because i just don't think it can get better than that this is by stephen herod bachner 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 B-U-H-N-E-R, uh, author of Sacred Plant Medicine. I'm going to be getting that book soon. Uh, I don't have it yet, but there's always a wish list, right? So Sacred Metal, uh, Sacred Plant Medicine is something that I'm I'm interested in purchasing, and I will and I will buy that. So just so you know, that's out there. But this has got recipes in it. This has got some great stuff. Really, really cool. 120 recipes. For ancient indigenous beers, meads, and meads from 31 countries and six continents, the most complete evaluation of honey ever published. Cool stuff. This is a great book. You should look into it. Okay, so we're going to get into some encyclopedias because I think you should have encyclopedias on specifics for whatever it is that you're interested in. And I think you should have multiple ones because um, some will say something the others will say something else about the same thing. And uh, if you put them all together and you read and you cross-reference, you'll end up with a much bigger, fuller picture of what you're trying to research. So this is the Complete Medicinal Herbal uh, by Penelope Odie. Uh, this is a practical guide to the healing properties of herbs with more than 250 remedies for common ailments. So this also has um, recipes in it, which is really cool. So this has the recipes. Uh, the Plant Medicine by Rico Keck has um, the, the ways to make the products to put into the recipes, if, if that distinction is clear. I hope, that, I hope that's clear. Um, making infusions, syrups, essential oils, stuff like that. Really cool things in here for specific ailments. Uh, this is really great. The Complete Illustrated Holistic Herbal. Uh, a Safe and Practical Guide to Making and Using Herbal Remedies by David Hoffman. This has wonderful, wonderful pictures in it. I mean, actual pictures of the plants 
themselves. Uh, so did the last one that I showed you, but this one, I just, I just love it. It's beautiful. They did a really great job. Um, this was actually one of the first books that I looked at and I went through this, uh, plant by plant. Um, and this is one of the ways that I decided what kind of plants I wanted to grow in my garden. And I just made a big list and I've been slowly checking off that list. Maybe not as slowly as our bank account would like. I can't help myself. Um, but uh, <laughs> I pretty much have it all now. So the bank account can rest now. Anyway, so that's a really great book. This is super, super, super awesome. This is the Herb Syllabus by Dr. John R. Christopher. He is a master herbalist guide. This is so, or this is a master herbalist guide. This is so cool though, because uh, I've said before that I'm a Christian and he comes about the herbalist uh, perspective from um, a biblical viewpoint, which I think is super cool. See, I think God put herbs on this planet to help us. Uh, I mean, the, what we started off in the Garden of Eden, right? It was a garden. That is our original plan. That's the original home. That's 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 the goal, the end goal, I believe. Anyway, so um, I think that herbs can kind of get if you're coming at it from a Christian perspective, they can get demonized a lot, which is just ridiculous and awful because God created these plants and he created our bodies and he created these plants to work with our bodies. So here we go. This is uh, Secrets of Native American Herbal Remedies. This is really cool because this goes back to like some old school stuff. And I always say have old school stuff and have new revolutionary idea stuff in your library. And this is one of those old school stuff. And this is for Native American herbal remedies, which I think is more appropriate for us in the United States because this is the location where all these plants grow the best to make these remedies. And so um, if you live in a different country, maybe try to find a book of like the, the original indigenous people that lived where you live right now and what they did with the herbs that grow in your area. So this is super cool. I love this book. There's a lot of really, really, really good stuff in here. But this talks about like mullein cough syrup. Um, there's like, there's salves. I mean, there's really good stuff in here. Stuff for Alzheimer's and allergies and stuff for depression and for anxiety and for, you know, they, they go into detail about different herbs and what each herb can be used for. And like, uh, there's 250 herbal formulas in this. This is done by Anthony J. Kachok, I think. We all know I'm terrible at pronouncing things. I'm sorry, guys. Um, Anyway, so he's got a PhD. He's got to know something pretty cool. Um, so Rosemary Gladstar is one of the all stars as far as um, like famous herbalists and really great herbalists in, uh, in, in the industry. And this is a great book if you have kids. This is Herbs for Children's Health because there are some herbs out there that are not good for kids to be taking. Um, and then there are herbs that are really good for kids uh, and this just kind of goes over all of those. And so if you have kids, this is a great one to have. Um, how to make and use general herbal remedies uh, for soothing common ailments. So this is not like a crazy intensive one. This is just kind of a basic um, thing. Actually, it's called Story Basics. It's by Story Books. Love story. Okay, so here we go. Baby's doing good. Okay. This is cool. This is the herb gardening. Sorry, not the. It's herb gardening in five seasons. An illustrated guide to cultivating herbs for re uh, recipes, uh, decorations, and gifts, which is cool because herbs are gorgeous and beautiful and they smell good and we should be able to use them as gifts and not just, um, I think we get focused. Well, I do. I don't know. I'm not going to speak for you guys, but I get focused on like the medicinal remedies and stuff like that a little bit. And I forget that we can do other things with them too, like give them as gifts. Um, and so, uh, it helps with, um, 
ways to grow herbs and also how to uh, put them together in great ways. So that's a really good one. Oh, I'm sorry. That's by uh, Adelma Grenier Simmons. I'm gonna put that right there. So if you need a screenshot or something, you can, because my pronunciation is not going well. Okay, so here are two books that go together. This is something that blew my mind. These two books are really incredible and they go together as a pair. So this one is called Herbal Antibiotics. My baby duck is sleeping in my arm, so I can't move that arm. And this one's called Herbal Antivirals. And there are plants in here that he talks about that I have never heard talked about before. And it's, it's really incredible. And um, so these are, he gives natural remedies for emerging and resistant viral infections, as well as natural alternatives for treating Doug, resi Doug resistant, I have an uncle Doug, uh, drug resistant bacteria. Um, the cool thing about this is he, Stephen Herod, uh, he is so well documented in his research. Like he has a crazy amount of research that he went into with extensive studies on things and he gives you references and there's a bibliography for like every single thing that he researched and it's incredible. This is probably one of the best researched books I have ever seen in my life. A lot of herbal books can be kind of like um, uh, anecdotal, right? This is not at all. This is straight up medicinal journal stuff going on and it's incredible. Um, um, I just, I just don't, I, I cannot recommend these two books enough. I went on Amazon and I bought these full price because they're so, they're so important. So, um, I would, I mean, seriously guys, like if you don't have these, you need to get these, uh, herbal antibiotics and herbal antivirals. And, um, and it talks about not just how to fight if you have a, if you need antiviral or antibiotics or whatever, like it doesn't just talk about those it talks about how to boost your system so that you won't need them as well and what kind of herbs help with that so um these two books are invaluable really 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 good uh, i have used that a lot and there's actually um i'm going to do a video on one of the the recipes i used from this book as well as rico Keck's catch books uh on the making herbal medicines um that uh, I took my daughter to the doctor and they told her she wasn't going to see any, um, any recovery from an illness that she had for a year. Um, and because of the, the medicine that I was able to make for her from these two books, uh, she got better within a week. It was ridiculous. So, uh, this is also a really great book and it's also a beautiful book. This is the Modern Herbal Dispensatory. A medicine making guide. This is a really good one too. The way that she presents her information is really good. Uh, or he does. Thomas Easley and Stephen Horn. Um, this is a this is just an incredible book, and it really goes into detail about why some of these things work. And it go I like I like how in depth it is on each of the different herbs. And there's a lot of herbs in here that are not in some of the other ones. And then also um, it gives a lot of different ways to use them, not just one or two ways, but like a lot of different ways for each of the, of the, each of the different types of medicines that you can make with something. And it goes into the basics as well. So it's not just so, so detailed that it gives you the craziness. It gives you also the, the basics as well. Like what is the difference between a tincture and a vinegar? How do you make um, fresh plant tinctures versus dry herb tinctures? Um, what equipment do you need? Um, are there easy ways of doing it? Are there harder ways of doing it? Um, are there traditional ways of doing it? Non-traditional ways of doing it? I mean, it, she even shows you how to make essential oils. I mean, he, I keep saying she. My plants are he's and my books are she's apparently. 
uh, but like really, really great stuff on the basics of how to extract this medicine from these herbs. And it's a beautiful book and it feels good. I'm a little bit tactile, so I really like when the when the book has a nice texture. So that is a really, really great book. Um, I've only got like 12 more. No, <laughs> just a couple more. Uh, Earl Mendel's Herb Bible. This is a really good one. This is just, this is a nice one to have. Um, I mean, it's basically kind of like an encyclopedia. Uh, here's another encyclopedia. I, I guess the rest of these are just encyclopedias. So the complete book of herbs, a practical guide to growing and using herbs. This one is by Leslie Bremis. This is a great one. I mean, I really, I just think that you need to have a lot of different encyclopedias put together. You'll have a lot of really good uh, advice. And so uh, this is a good one. This one, this is the new guide to herbs, the new all kind I don't think it's that new, honestly. I think it was new. I don't think it is new now. Uh, this is by Andy Cl Clevely. Clevely. And uh, it's got great photographs and it's got great ways of doing things and ideas and, and stuff like that. This is a really good one. The Complete Book of Herbs. This is by... <laughs> Andy Cleveley again, and then also Catherine Richmond. So uh, maybe because it's got Andy Cleveley in it, maybe it's kind of got the same stuff that the new guide to herbs is, or maybe that came after this one and that's why it's the new guide. I don't know. I have both of them. I'm glad that I have both of them. You can never have too many books. Uh, so this is a really, really great. And this talks about propagation, which is nice. And it's got really pretty pictures. And then Rodale's. Rodals, Rodet, Rodet, anyway, you know what I mean. Uh, Illustrated Encyclopedia of Herbs. This is a really important one. Uh, I think Rodale is a, a excellent publisher and I, and I appreciate most of the things that I've seen from them. In fact, I haven't seen a lot of stuff that I don't appreciate from them. Uh, but they really like, this is, this is a really good one. Uh, oh, so this is one of the things that I really like about this is it has these charts in the book and it, it goes, it starts on this page and it goes all the way across. He's so cute. I'll give you a close up of him at the end. Um, and it shows the herb. Um, it, it talks about the plant type. So is it like a perennial annual, biannual? Uh, herbaceous perennial type thing, tropical. Uh, it goes into the, there's the plant size, the bloom time, the plant hardiness zone, the soil pH that you need, the soil requirements, the light requirements, propagation method, and then pests and diseases that might affect it. And I just don't think that there's a uh, 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 encyclopedia, herbal encyclopedia that I have that goes into that much detail. Um, that you can just kind of see it across the board, um, the differences between them. And um, I mean, even just having the bloom time so that you know that you have maybe uh, flowers blooming for the bees at all times of the year. Um, and then, you know, where to plant them in the garden because of how big they are or what their soil requirements are. Uh, it's just like this, I would buy this, this book for this, um, this list alone, basically. But I love this and I look at this a lot. I reference this book often. Um, and um, it's just, it's really, really beautiful and it's really good. And it's got great ideas in it and it's got great information in it. So this is a really good one. This is Rodale's Illustrated Encyclopedia of Herbs. So those are the herb books that I like the best and that I have, I mean, there obviously there are some that I need to buy still. Um, <laughs> sweetie pie. So uh, Igor says, could you please like, subscribe, and push that notification bell? What do you think about that? Mm. For uh, this video, please, I appreciate that if you do. Um, if you guys have any ideas or questions, or if you guys have herb books that I didn't talk about that you absolutely love, please let me know because uh, I'm always looking to expand my library and I'd like to know there are so many books out there that there's no way that I could ever know all the books. Um, so if you've got good references, let me know because I, I really want to know about it. 
Oh, he's falling asleep. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and stay blessed. Woo! And here's Igor. Isn't he so cute? Say hi, Igor. <laughs>